This is the day that you will always remember as the day that you... Walk with History is out here on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and it is just beautiful. This area, Hatteras, Okoroka Island, Nags Head, all the way down these very thin, narrow islands off the coast of North Carolina are what is called the Outer Banks the most outer part of North Carolina. And these waters are dangerous waters. This is why they call it the graveyard of the Atlantic, because there's over 600 shipwrecks that happened out here. And it's because of this sh shifting sand and these islands, this, this coastline has changed with the weather that beats down on it and pulls the sand away. All the hurricanes and just storms that have happened here have changed this coastline. When people are sailing this, it, it changes so quickly and you get sandbars that pop up and things like that, that there's been so many shipwrecks out here. So the Monitor wrecked right off the coast here. Here is where the Monitor, it was being towed and it sunk on New Year's Eve, uh, 1862. So we just left the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum in Hatteras, North Carolina. You're not allowed to film inside, you're not allowed to take videos inside, but what's neat about this place is when I did the Battle of the Ironclads in Norfolk, off the coast right here is where the monitor actually uh, sank, and it sank on New Year's Eve, 1862, so the battle happened in March of 1862, so not even nine months later, it sank off the coast here in 1862. Now they actually found the wreckage and were able to bring artifacts up from it. And there are some artifacts here in this museum. They have artifacts from Queen Anne's Revenge. So Queen Anne's Revenge is a ship that was commandeered by Blackbeard the pirate and his crew. And Queen Anne's Revenge was a slaving ship and it was commandeered by Blackbeard and his crew off the coast of Martinique and they then took it over and used it as their ship. So they actually found that shipwreck as well. And there are artifacts from that shipwreck that are, are in this museum. They have some other artifacts, old lighthouse lenses, which is usually a bunch of glass that bends the light. Another cool thing they had here though, people off the coast here in Hatteras at their life uh, saving station got the CQD code for the Titanic. So before SOS came to be, it was CQD. CQD? Sir? That's right, CQD, the distress call. That's our position. Tell whoever responds that we're going down by the head and need immediate assistance. And people here at the life saving station received that code, CQD, from the RMS Titanic and passed it on to people in New York. So, a couple things about that, but the, I think the biggest claim to fame to this area is the monitor having been sunk off the coast here, I think 13 miles to the west of Hatteras right here. And then they actually found the wreckage and brought up artifacts from it. I'm upside down. Why am I upside down? So we're at the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse today. Um, and it's awesome. It's white, it's white and black, like a candy cane kind of striping behind me. Kind of famous, that striping for lighthouses to make it um, visible during the day. And then it was raised up, the red pedestal raised it up to give it more height. So you could see it's a Frenzel, Frenzel lens that this used. This Fennel lenses, this is a Frenzel lens. Um, again, bending glass to amplify the light. 
and being able to see 20 miles out. These stones here have the names of all the lighthouse keepers who took care of the light. So if you were a lighthouse keeper, it's a 24 hour job because you mostly slept during the day and then at night you had to make sure the light was consistent from sundown to sunrise. So you're up all night ma managing the light and then you know you sleep during the day. So this says here you climb the lighthouse it's 248 spiral step staircase about 12 stories. So if you ran this lighthouse you would have to do that multiple times a day to be checking on that light. So you think about great shape lighthouse keepers are in. This is really cool when you get out here to where the lighthouse is. This shows you the keeper's house over here. How cool is that? Most keeper's houses aren't this far away from the lighthouse. That's a pretty good distance. Um, weather, things like that, sickness, illness, you would probably more than likely stay close to the lighthouse during the nighttime. But to be so far away during the day, it's nice kind of get a little area, a place to live. So here's the front of the lighthouse. Again, they raised the height of it with this red bottom and some of the stones that you saw with the names of the keepers that were engraved are the original stones in which the platform was put for the lighthouse. You can see three windows as you get your way up to the actual lens at the very top. This is a pretty good video of showing the spiral staircase inside the lighthouse. This is one of the lighthouse keepers. It says seven of, several of his children were born here at the light station. So like I told you, this is a family job. There was two assistants and their families that lived in this house and the main keeper lived in the smaller house. This is a job that a lot of women got a lot of independence doing and you'll see stories of women who were lighthouse keepers or daughters or wives of lighthouse keepers who manned the light during storms or went out and rescued sailors that had crashed. This is something that women got to be very independent in doing. So I read a lot of stories about women lighthouse keepers or family members, but it's a beautiful day here today. You see lots of families out here enjoying it. So if you're ever in Hatteras, Queen Anne's Revenge, which is the ship that Blackbeard commandeered, also sank off the coast here. And those are just a couple of the ships, but there's many um, submarines, World War I and World War II. You'd get people who would blockade this area and they called it Torpedo Alley. And there have been British soldiers who have washed up on shore after being killed. So there's a couple graveyards to them in the area as well. And so this is a very turbulent place to sail. And that's, I think, why Blackbeard liked it so much is because most people aren't going to chase him out here and he can whip around the island and then get cover. This Outer Banks provides cover for more inland water area, which is where he would really hang out more, but the ships would crash out here coming to look for him. I'm sure things haven't changed much historically. I'm sure what I'm seeing today is probably what Blackbeard saw in the 1600s. I'm sure this is what Washington, if he came down here, or anybody colonialists saw in the 1700s, or the War of 1812, I'm sure they it looked relatively all the same. I just think of Blackbeard, and I think of the love of the ocean and sailors having to really sail these kind of waters just to understand this area. I mean, like they say some of Blackbeard's treasure still hasn't been found. And who knows if he came ashore anywhere along here and buried it quickly. So those things are constantly being found and evolved and the shipwrecks are being found and more is being understood about that way of life. So if you ever get a chance to get out here, it's just really beautiful and inspiring and really a lot of fun. So come on out, go to the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum, come walk in Blackbeard's footsteps. On to our next Walk With History.
On deck, you scabrous dogs! Hands for braces! Let go and hold to run free! Now, bring me that horizon. And really bad eggs. Drink up, me hearty Joe Ho.